Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe, this uh, shortened market week. It's uh, It was shortened uh, by the Memorial Day holiday on Monday, and then I'm actually going to be out on Friday as I'm leaving for an annual uh, vacation with my wife over a long weekend. And yet, even in this shortened week here in the market, I think you've gotten a very good illustration uh, and not at all unexpected of what uh, the environment we find ourselves in. Uh, the trade war did not end this week, and therefore the market volatility has not ended, and it's been biased to the downside. As I'm talking here in the middle of the day on Thursday, market's up a tiny bit here today. It was down a good amount on Wednesday, and we're and we're just floating around, but just you know finding our way to work a bit lower. Um, and on the month, I suspect markets will close out. It's still a little early. Close down on the month about 5%. And keep in mind, they were up over 15% on the year, entering the month of May. So you still have a double-digit gain on the year in equities through the end of May if things were to end up where they are here now. But this um, give back of a lot of market gains in the downside volatility is all directly uh, correlated to the, the uncertainty surrounding this trade war. But what I think is is taking place now is that this is not just simply the market saying it's uncertain, which it is. How's it going to end? Market prices, you know, experience volatility around that. Now we're seeing tangible, empirical, economic evidence of what's happening from the trade war. Uh, data this week of overall global trade aggregate global trade at its lowest level in a decade. You see the capital goods orders in the American business economy declining, industrial production slowing. So, so far, we don't see consumer spending or, or employment data, but we haven't had any new data in those categories since this trade war reignited in the disappointment of, of negotiation breakdowns earlier in the month of May. So that data may have a bit of lag to it, but we don't know yet. But um, I believe that it remains the great fear is that even if there ends up being some sort of a political solution or some sort of, of cosmetic resolution, it's entirely possible that this goes on long enough that it becomes too late. Because I think that the necessity of capital expenditures into the uh, uh, business investment, into the U.S. economy, that ingredient being stripped back almost down right now uh, to the levels that they had been when President Trump came into office. That represents uh, a significant threat to the ongoing extension of this expansion economically. So then what happens out of that? Well, perhaps the pain and evidence of these collateral issues drives the parties that be back to the negotiating table. I've stated for about a month now that I think this will keep going until the pain point gets high enough for one side or the other or both that they end up back at the negotiating table and, and coming to some sort of an arrangement. Um, I am increasingly skeptical of this argument that this hurts China way more than us and we can just go about waiting that out. I think that politically that will really be a, a fatal decision. Um, but also economically, I think that it's a failure of imagination to understand the um, connectivity in the global supply chain of how many things that are at stake here. And again, it's entirely possible that this genie gets put back in the bottle before a lot of this shakes out, but that's a matter of time. At some point, uh, the, I think that those effects will be uh, lasting. So um, it, it's not meant to be entirely pessimistic. I mean, for one thing, equity markets are hardly pricing in Armageddon out of it. They may be underappreciating the risk, but it's really actually, I would have expected the volatility we've had all month, if indeed we end up on the stocks down about 5% on the month, I would have expected that in the first few days. And so the downside volatility has been nowhere near what I thought it could have been yet. However, interest rates, bond yields, pricing in their now even more muted expectations of global growth have collapsed, which has led for a huge rally in bond markets on the month. 
So I think asset allocation has actually been a just completely traditionally effective tool this month at mitigating equity market volatility. And most people will see their portfolios this month, their stocks down X and their bonds up an amount very close to X and, and a lot of offset there for a balanced portfolio, or at least a significant amount of offsetting of that downside volatility. So um, all conversation right now on a macro basis is essentially around the trade war, the collateral damage from such. Some of the things I write about in Dividend Cafe this week is um, it just kind of that impact to the economy that we've talked about, um, the effectiveness of asset allocation I just mentioned. And then I think, I think it's worth me closing up with a comment on the Federal Reserve um, because I've been not only beating the drum that I, I d hoped the Fed would not cut rates this year, but I've also beat the drum that, that I don't believe they should, that some eventual process of normalization needs to play out, and, and by reversing what they did, they already generated the pain in the credit markets in Q3 and Q4 of last year. So to now go undo it now and then just leave us back in a position where it has to kind of happen again into the future is not the ideal. And I understand very well, especially borrowers and those looking for sugar highs that might feel tradable in, in capital markets and risk assets, that there's no uh, decline of interest rates that will never not be embraced with a hug. Um, that's not how I feel. Uh, I don't want to see interest rates dropping, and I don't celebrate uh, the bond market saying, oh, we don't have high expectations of global growth. What I want is global growth. And the debt deflation that is pushing markets lower, now exacerbated by pressures from the trade war, is not anything to feel cheery about. But... Do I believe that this is dramatically increasing the likelihood of a Fed rate cut either sooner or perhaps a little bit later into the year? I do. And so that needs to be watched and needs to be understood in the way we're allocating bond portfolios and the risk of bounce back rallies in some risk assets. Uh, the idea of the Fed cutting a rate has been so off the table for so long, either because for years and years and years we were already at zero, you can't cut from the zero bound, or we knew the trajectory was slightly moving higher. The notion of actually now having a serious conversation of a rate cut, um, my goodness, when's the last time they cut rates? I guess it would have been 2004, 2005? That we've actually had a, well, oh, no, 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 since 08 when they got to zero. So, right, yeah, I mean, you're talking about uh, over 11 years. And that was in a financial crisis period. The last time in kind of normal, if there's such thing as normal, Fed land in, in my career, I think it's been 15, 14 years. So, it's just surreal stuff going on. Uh, politically, I'm not going to go down all that path right now. The NAFTA 2.0 needs to get done. Uh, it's kind of weird because everyone's for it, and so why it wouldn't get done is, you know, you can do your own math on that. Um, but let me close out the video there. Uh, please do reach out with any questions. Send the video out to anyone you would like. I know a lot of people are talking about this stuff, and I don't want a rosy uh, kind of image of what's happening around this out there. I'm very convinced that dividend growth equities are the way to be playing what's happening. I'm very convinced that an allocation and alternatives like the overweight alternative allocation we did earlier in the year and a more bonds that act like bonds allocation to fixed income like we have done now for over a year has been really defensive and appropriate places to be. I'm very pleased with the asset allocations that we have for our respective clients customized to their own situation. But all that to say, those looking for this thing to end in a week or two, I, I, I mean, I just don't see it. I think this can go on for quite some time, and it's important to understand what the, the both short-term and long-term impacts could be. So I will leave it there. Thank you very much for watching this week's Dividend Cafe.